Assalamualaikum, good day. My name is Nisirina Nadia Binti Maizatul and today I'm going to present my journal article entitled as Removal of CU from Printed Circuit Board Leachate Using Activated Carbon Derived from Fox Hill Palm Fruits. First and foremost, in this new technological era, electronic devices or components has become a central issue for society as it provides multi-purpose use that makes life convenient. For instance, um, headphones, gadgets, computer and many others. And therefore, the escalating demand of electronic devices would be a reason to the fast growing of e-waste generations. And not only that, the improper management of e-waste disposal have emerged to become one of the world's issues that could pose potential threat to human and also environment. Malaysia has estimated to produce 53 million of e-waste in the year 2020, which is due to the frequent changes of product that is resulted from continuous innovation, technological advancements, new features and trends that indirectly shortens the product lifespans. And as we can see, there's a lot of new models of phones and gadgets that is presented this year. And little we know that electronic components have many valuable metals, especially in printed circuit boards, for example, um, gold, silver, platinum, and many others. And hence, it is worth to recycle this e-waste. However, E-waste is also considered as environmental contaminant as it contains a lot of hazardous materials such as plumbum, cadmium, and also copper that could pose detrimental health effects to human and also environments. Hence, it can be considered as both secondary resources and also environmental toxicants. Generally, recycling and metal removal process involve hydrometallurgical processes where metal is leached from the PCB solutions and recovered later via adsorption processes using activated carbon. And in this study, the adsorption process using activated carbon derived from agro waste has been studied to uh, remove the metals as it is cost efficient and also effective as well. Hence, the purpose and the objectives of this study are to determine the CU concentrations using FAAS and also to remove the copper from PCB leachate using activated carbon derived from foxtail palm fruits. Basically, there are several methods that has been applied in this study which started with the preparations of activated carbon from foxtail fruits and then preparations of printed circuit boards leachate and then removal of CU through adsorption experiment and then determinations of percentage of field and last with um, and last with characterization. Start with the preparations of activated carbon derived from foxtail palm fruits. So, um, basically, the sample were washed to remove all the surface impurities and dirt, followed by overnight oven dry at 100 degrees Celsius. And next, the dried fruit were carbonized for 2 hours at 300 degrees Celsius, and then the char was crushed into small pieces using pestle and mortar and was grinded using miller blender to get the smaller bits of the sample. The crushed fruits then was sieved um, to pass through a 250 micrometer mesh sieve and then stored um, into the desiccator for further chemical activation process. For the chemical activation process, the cha was weighed for about 40 grams and was soaked and impregnated in a a beaker that contained ATML of fashion 3 and then the mixture were mixed for 30 minutes until it became paste and then the paste were left for overnight in a few good for the chemical to be fully reacted and after that the slurry was carbonized once again at 500 degrees celsius for two and a half hours in the furnace and in order to remove any excess HNO3, the produce activated carbon were washed using distilled water until pH uh, 7 is obtained and then uh, it were dried at 100 till 100 deg 150 degrees Celsius for 3 hours in oven. Next is the preparations of printed circuit board slichik. So the obtained PCBs were sorted, crushed and grounded to the smaller pieces which in range of 1 till 5 centimeter so that the leaching process of the PCBs will be much easier and faster and then the sample went through hydrometallurgical uh, techniques where about 20 grams of grounded PCBs were soaked uh, in 1000 ml of aqua regia and were allowed to leach for about 
um, an hour and more and then the actually the aqua region solution were prepared using one ratio three of uh, hno3 and also icl and at the end of the experiment the leachate solutions was filtered and stored uh, in a flask for further use Next is the removal of CU through adsorption experiment. So in this experiment, there are two different dosages that has been used, which were one gram and also five gram of adsorption dosages that were put that were mixed in 100 ml of PCB leachate solution into 150 ml flask. So uh, basically, uh, this mixture were mixed uh, vigorously for about 40 minutes of contact time in a in a shaker machine and was shook at 150 rpm to ensure the homogeneity and lastly the percentage removal of cu by the activated carbon produced from foxtail palm fruits were determined and also calculated using the percentage removal equations and the percentage of yield of this act Activated carbon produce also were calculated by taking the final mass of the carbon divided by the initial mass of the precursor times 100. Last but not least is the characterization process where the FAAS machine is being used to quantify the concentrations of CU metal in the PCB leachate solutions before and after the removal process. So from this experiment, the percentage of yields that could be calculated and obtained was 59.42%, which was relatively high to be compared to a study by Quoto et al. on all palm shell activated carbon, which the percentage yields was recorded as 56.47%. The difference that we could see from these two studies was the activation temperature which were 500 degrees Celsius and 630 degrees Celsius respectively and this slight difference of the yield from this palm species might be due to the high temperature use when conducted the oil palm shell activation process where the increase of temperature might degrade the microstructure of activated carbon itself and hence more volatile are released resulting the lower percentage of the year. The effect of contact time and adsorbent dosage uh, were determined through this preliminary study of CU removal using activated carbon where there were two different dosages that has been used which were 1 gram and 5 gram a uh, two different shape and to compare the effectiveness of CU removal on low and high adsorbent dosage and both of these different dosages were tested out for 40 minutes of contact time. And as we can see from the bar graph, uh, the percentage removal of CU for adsorbent dosages 1 gram and 5 gram were 11.219% and 14.417%. This percentage removal was considered low um, and this might be because of the shorter contact time which was 40 minutes that uh, used to conduct the experiment where most of the studies showed that uh, the highest removal percentage of the metals could be achieved with up to 24 hours of the contact time. However, from the result, we could see that the higher percentage removal could be obtained at higher adsorbent dosage, which was 5 gram at 14.417%. Therefore, we could conclude that the percentage removal increases with higher adsorbent dosage use and this might due to the introduction of binding sites for the adsorption process. However, many conducted studies on the CU removal reported that CU was limited to only monolayer adsorbent which means it is only in contact with the surface layer of the adsorbent itself. We could see from these two studies where the first one is by Wahi et al. where five different dosages of pipe oil fruit bunch AC were added to heavy metal solution which contained concentrations ranging from 10 to 20 mgl and agitated up to 24 hours of contact time and the result recorded that the higher initial concentration of CU being used the CU removal percentage is decreases. This might be because at high concentration, the adsorbent sites might get saturated and therefore the metal ions could not freely interact with adsorbent active site and thus the percentage removal decreases. Another study was conducted by Benzo et al. on the adsorption of CU where 1 gram to 5 gram of the adsorbent dose were tested out in copper solutions and agitated up to 70 minutes of contact time. 
the result recorded that the highest removal percentage of CU was at 3 grams of absorbent dosages and further additions of absorbent dosage brought to no increment. This might be because high absorbent dosages might cause overlapping of the absorption's active site and hence the metal would be shielded from binding to the absorbent active sites. This was because uh, CU was limited to only monolayer absorbent. The recommendations, the highest percentage removal um, of the metals can be achieved at longer contact time and higher of absorbent dosage. And hence, other value of different dose contact times such as 60 to 120 minutes with different absorbent dosage of 1 to 5 gram will be studied along with the progress of this research. In this study, we can conclude that the hydrometallurgical leaching could leach the printed circuit boards into solutions and hence, the CU concentrations could be determined using FAS. And next is the activated carbon produced by foxyl pump fruits um, agro waste is potentially to remove the metals from the solutions as the calculated percentage of fill is 59.42% which is quite, quite high. Or higher percentage removal of CU could be obtained at high as a dosage and also at longer contact time.